The Eurovision Song Contest has never been closely associated with great taste or even great harmony, but, however, the UK's entrant, veteran crooner Engelbert Hunkerpenning performs this Saturday, there will be a few more discordant notes than usual. The host country is Azerbaijan, the winner of last year's contest, and the event will take place in its capital, Baku, Eurovision's most easterly location. But as our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Miller has found in tonight's special report, the choice of host is proving controversial because it's a country noted for an appalling record of its own on human rights. It's melancholic. There's only one key change. But at 76, the indefatigable Engelbert Humperdinck with his ballad, Love Will Set You Free, is the UK's secret weapon in Baku. The ex-Soviet Caucasian Republic of Azerbaijan, last year's winner, now finds itself in the spotlight, an expected TV audience of up to 300 million. This time, the Eurovision finds itself in an authoritarian state ruled by an autocrat, with hunger striking political prisoners. It's going to take a lot of love to set them free. Protesters arrested at this demonstration last year are now on hunger strike. They've joined Azerbaijan's ranks of political prisoners. And this is Baku this afternoon. With the Eurovision in town, these protesters now know they have an audience of millions. But that won't last long. This is their only chance to be seen and heard by the outside world. And they're taking it. Over the course of the next hour, we witnessed three flash protests and counted more than 20 arrests. They say us that everybody who is uh, uh, fighting for democracy will be in prison after every vision. This protest has been in prison four times and as he confirmed her story, he was marched off by plainclothes police. Azerbaijan has spent millions on PR campaigns to polish its image in advance of the Eurovision. This wasn't part of the plan. Please release me, let me go, was Engelbert Humperdinck's chart topper 45 years ago. But the veteran crooner from Leicester isn't much interested in stuff that goes on in the countries he visits. I asked him whether he was aware of the political prisoners and protests. I'm not uh, politically minded, I don't have enough uh, experience in that direction, so I cannot answer your question or even be you know, in involved in anything. I don't know anything about it. I try to keep myself in show business and that's my business, show business. As Eurovision contestants have been flying into Baku, this Azerbaijani rock star has had to flee into exile. Jamal Ali sings about freedom and human rights, and in Azerbaijan, that draws heat. There is nothing like to be watched every day. They know where I live, they know where I go to, so they can do anything at any time. <laughs> One day in mid-March, Jamal Ali pushed the boat out too far. He was playing an informal gig at the first opposition protest permitted in Baku for seven years. It was all going well until Jamal said something very rude about the president's dead mother. Jamal Ali was arrested with two other band members. He was lucky. His offence could have earned him five years in jail. He got ten days. I had a bag, a plastic bag on my head, uh, handcuffed from behind and barefoot, sitting on a chair and my feet were on another, on another chair and a policeman was sitting on my knees, a huge one, and the other one was beating me in my heels. He was made to understand that in Azerbaijan, if you fight the law, the law wins. Be bland, they advised. Go do some other songs. Don't do anything political. Don't do anything about uh, president or 
social issues. Just go and do some love songs. President Ilham Aliyev loves to be loved, but like his father before him, he's not a man to be messed with. Here he is voting in a referendum that basically made him president for life. And this is his wife, Mariban. She heads the Eurovision Preparation Committee. They've spent half a billion pounds preparing for this. They've even imported 1,000 London taxis from China just for the Eurovision. But this country can afford it. It's got oil. The nodding donkeys of Azerbaijan have been pumping oil for more than a century. Western Europe might be in recession, but Baku is booming. It wants to be the Dubai of the Caspian. BP is here, pumping oil and sucking out gas. BP's joint venture partner, Azerbaijan's national oil company, Sokar. The government's been giving Baku a makeover in the months leading up to the Eurovision. Mass demolitions, mass evictions, and scant compensation. Human rights groups here say people's rights have been trampled. It's just a song, sing for democracy, sing freedom. But demolitions aren't just carried out to beautify and modernize. These are security men from Sokar, the state oil company. How can you treat people like this? This man cries. Sokar has just wrecked his house. The oil company claims the house was built illegally on its land and was unsafe. It has published plans to demolish thousands more houses. But Sokar does not like journalists filming this. Which is how Idrak Abbasov, who shot those pictures, ended up in hospital last month. I had a head injury and brain concussion. I suffered an eye socket injury. That is why I have problems with my eyesight now. I've got two broken ribs and a lot of bruises from the beating. My kidneys hurt. I was kicked many times. I was unconscious when they brought me to hospital. Sokar, the state oil giant's nodding donkeys, litter the Baku suburb of Sulutepe, where Idrak lives. In September last year, the home of his elderly parents just up the road was attacked and partially demolished. This is Adalet, his brother. That's his father, Talman. His mother, Naima, has already been rushed to hospital with head injuries. The family are adamant that their attackers were Sokar security men. When I went to see them, I asked them how they knew. Talman said it was clearly written on the backs of their jackets. Others, he said, wore camouflage. Well, this is Idrak's father and his mother and his brother, Adalet, and all of them were in this house when the Sokar security people arrived and started trying to knock it down. All of them were beaten, including Adalet's wife. They've started to rebuild the house. Um, it was clear that this was done to teach them a lesson. Sokar stands accused of summarily demolishing hundreds of houses in Sulutepe. I've just picked up my Eurovision press pack and it's full of gifts from sponsors. And guess what? One of them is Sokar. Wonder what's inside. Would you look at that? Pure crude. Is there any awkwardness attached to the fact that this company is a co-sponsor of the event? Uh, they are in fact a sponsor of this event and 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 we don't find it awkward, no? I mean, it's, it's, it's Eurovision Song Contest. But just because it's the Eurovision Song Contest, doesn't, does, it, does it mean that you don't have to be bothered about human rights? Well, yes, uh, we have tried for, for 57 years uh, to keep Eurovision Song Contest free from politics, and we don't want to use Eurovision Song Contest as a political tool when we're traveling around. We repeatedly asked Sokar for an interview or a statement, but the company declined. These people are on hunger strike. 
They're fasting in solidarity with political prisoners who are also on hunger strike. They've all vowed to continue until the Eurovision is over. Ibrahim's 26-year-old son Rufat is in jail because he marched for democracy. Ibrahim loves his country but loathes the ruling Aliyev family. I don't know what we've done to deserve this. They have oil, gas, caviar, all the property and villas, but they still arrest us. They get angry when you talk about democracy. When we say freedom, they want to kill us. As the Eurovision counts down, Azerbaijan's rock star campaigner Jamal Ali has fled for his life. The day he left, he uploaded this parting shot. The Aliyev regime brands as shameful the clamor for change. Jamal Ali has a simple answer to that.